Thank you very much uh, for the kind introduction. And it's really great that uh, there is a lot of passion going around uh, improving the diabetes care. And uh, I'm glad that I'm going to be part of it at least for a short time. That's very good to hear. But I will try to, you know, come and join at the end of the time. Maybe, we'll, you know, we'll join the conversation. and Maybe we will all try and improve the diabetes in the long run. I do talk a lot, by the way. So feel free to stop me, you know, when, when, when you feel like it. But I, will, I got some slides to show, but I would like to keep it interactive. So let me start sharing the slides. So the topic I was asked to cover today is uh, the interaction between the thyroid and the diabetes. And uh, it's a very interesting one because, you know, yeah. obviously I deal uh, with both endocrine and diabetes, but other than that, it's actually a very unique uh, problem with our patients with diabetes. So if I move to the next slide, okay. So in my talk, it's uh, about 10, 15 minutes. I will quickly introduce uh, uh, the relationship between the diabetes and thyroid. And also I will go through some diabetes related conditions. I think this is where I, actually we all have a big role to play to educate everybody, including, you know, if you are patients ourselves, so you, uh, as healthcare professionals, uh, to tell everybody to get the diabetes uh, full picture right. And maybe I will go through one case to illustrate the problem. And also I will go through some of the prevalence around thyroid problem and briefly go through uh, hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism. So I'm aware that I think um, there are patients maybe on the uh, talk here. So I'll try my best to pitch my talk at a level anybody can understand. And if there is anything you can't, you're not sure about, feel free to stop me and maybe raise your hand if you want. I like this a lot uh, because especially with the diabetes, there is always a lot of three things about diabetes. So if I go back, the three classical symptoms people get with diabetes is, you know, they end up uh, drinking a lot, they end up peeing a lot and they end up losing their weight. So those are the, you know, three classical symptoms. Even if you go further, their main problem with the diabetes is, you know, their insulin deficiency, insulin resistance, where insulin is not working, and also, you know, their lifestyle factors to blame. But the way I want to paint uh, this three thing today is about uh, making sure that we don't really uh, put a blind eye on the thyroid problem in our diabetes patient. I think we should start talking about it, you know, either patients or healthcare professionals. And also, I think we should try and open our listening about our patient's symptoms for us to recognize this problem. I think that's how I see it. As we all know, probably the thyroid hormone play a major part in metabolism and energy expenditure within our body. And it, this is, seems to be the commonest uh, hormone problem that is associated with diabetes, which is another hormone problem. And the confusing thing may be that often the symptoms can be quite overlapping especially things like weight loss. You know, diabetic patients can have weight loss if they have insulin deficiency. Tiredness can be non-specific and, you know, it can happen with diabetes even in other conditions and feeling hungry. So quite a lot of overlapping, overlapping symptoms and maybe the reason why people actually take some time to diagnose uh, the thyroid problem. And on the other side, untreated thyroid problem uh, will have uh, cardiovascular problems or will cause cardiovascular problems. And also I think equally untreated uh, overactive thyroid problem, which is a thyrotoxicosis, can also worsen the blood glucose you know, within our patients. So it's important for us to recognize this. I think this is the important slide. And I would rather, you know, we educate about this. And if there is any chance to, you know, put it anywhere, you know, commonly where people can look it up uh, to make sure that all our diabetic patients are discussed or you know even investigated further along these lines so if i just quickly go through the three common uh, hormone problems associated with especially with the type 1 diabetes which is another you know in inflammatory condition or immune condition is one is uh, celiac disease and the second one is thyroid problem and third one is like a stress hormone which is addison's disease then if i move to further to the right the two other important um, uh, messages we have to get across is recognizing fatty liver. So fatty liver is often undiagnosed and it seems to be very common and probably going to be the leading cause of liver failure in the future. So any patient, especially if they have type two diabetes and if they have a weight problem, 
I think my uh, theory would be they have fatty liver until proven otherwise. So we need to recognize that problem. Often the problem with that is actually the blood test itself is not very good. Half of the time, we wouldn't pick up the fatty liver by only doing the blood test. We may have to rely on further tests like scans and even maybe that they are not the perfect test. The second important thing is obstructive sleep apnea. So people who have been feeling tired and maybe sleepy, maybe snoring in the night, may well have uh, underlying sleep apnea. It is important because uh, you may have you know, even see a lot of uh, patients uh, telling you that once they have had their uh, sleep apnea treated with uh, you know, oxygen, often like CPAP or something like that, it changes their life and you know, gives them a lot of energy and improve the quality of life. But in addition to that, it actually improves their, their cardiovascular mortality. So they will lie, I mean, they will die less from heart attack, for example. So it's a very simple tool, and I actually do it on each and every type two diabetic patient. I think we should do that. And the others are like, um, maybe one other thing I may want to highlight here is uh, exocrine pancreatic insufficiency. If you uh, remember the pancreas produce, I mean, has two main functions. One is the insulin production. The other one is actually producing enzymes to digest our food and absorb our food. And interestingly, and more commonly, AD diabetic patients are more likely to get the second problem as well, other than their main problem with the insulin. And, you know, of, of course, diabetes patients will also have other problems. So this is a very important slide for me. I always talk about this uh, with my diabetes patients and even like for my juniors and, you know, for any healthcare professionals who come to look after my diabetes patient, I find this very useful. Uh, it's kind of a structured way of going through a few important uh, 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 important discussions we all need to do. Of course, we may well have limited time during our consultation, but at least by having a structured approach to the problem, we always will be able to cover you know, most of the things. So if I just go back to B, which is normally for blood pressure, but I will actually also say blood test. So this is where it starts. The story of thyroid starts with a blood test. Once we know the patients uh, are having symptoms of thyroid problem, I will recommend that all the diabetic patients should have thyroid blood check done at the time of their diagnosis. And if they have got type one diabetes, they should actually have a blood test done once a year, which is a you know, national recommendation anyway. The type two patients again, should have uh, the blood test done at the time of the diagnosis, but also later uh, during their course of illness, especially if they feel uh, symptoms like feeling tired. It is so common thyroid problem. And you know, this is a bit of an American study, uh, but still I think you know, it's very relevant to UK population as well. Quite a lot of people you know, in our diabetes population uh, will have thyroid problem to a varying degree. Let me start with an interesting case here. So this is a 52 year old, a fit and well um, uh, security officer who came to see me and his problem was diabetes. He told me that uh, he has family history of diabetes and he did have access to blood glucose uh, you know, meter and he did check his blood glucose and the blood glucose was very high. So there was no question that he had diabetes. When I talked to him, he told me that I have been getting sleep problems and I have been uh, feeling shaky. And then I thought maybe I should check his thyroid, a thyroid blood test. His thyroid blood test showed me that he had severe overactive thyroid problem. And then he also told me at the same time, actually, doctor, I could feel a lump in my neck. So I felt my, I mean, I, mean, I put my hand on his neck and realized he actually had a lump in his neck. So what actually happened here is that he actually had throat cancer and he also had overactive thyroid problem, which I will say, you know, a special type of overactive thyroid problem called Graves disease. And also at the same time, he had diabetes as a new diagnosis of diabetes. So it's one of the examples clearly illustrating the interaction between the hormones, especially the thyroid and the diabetes, and also even the cancer here, which is actually triggering one after another kind of problem here. The good news is, as part of the treatment for his throat cancer, his uh, cancer was treated with radiotherapy and uh, it cured his cancer and also cured his overactive thyroid problem. Only downside was because his thyroid cells were destroyed, he had to take thyroxine and he's on thyroxine. He's actually doing very well, 
with the diabetes because his thyroid problem is sorted and stabilized as well. So let me quickly go through some important uh, causes for thyroid problems. On the left, you can see uh, causes for underactive thyroid problem. The commonest cause for underactive thyroid problem is inflammation of the thyroid gland itself. Often people call it Hashimoto's thyroiditis. It's uh, one of the Japanese uh, physicians who described this, how, that's how the name come here. And the second uh, you know, cause uh, for the thyroid, underactive thyroid problem would be any structural damage to the thyroid gland itself. On the right side, uh, overactive thyroid problem commonly caused by, like I mentioned, uh, the commonest cause is Graves' disease. It's basically a person who has described this condition. And also there are other conditions like inflammatory conditions that also can cause overactive thyroid problem. Finding out whether people have thyroid problem is fairly easy with a blood test. So they will need a blood test. The first blood test is TSH. And often the lab is very good. They will do the other additional blood test if you write down the reason why you are requesting the blood test. Once the blood test is done, I think we will end up uh, um, two scenarios here. One is overactive thyroid problem. Another one is underactive thyroid problem. Underactive thyroid problem uh, will be managed with uh, thyroxine. So we will give uh, patients thyroxine. It's normally based on the weight and we will give uh, a smaller dose to start with. And then we will gradually increase the dose. Overactive thyroid problem is managed by uh, another medication called antithyroid medication. So it's called carbimazole. And uh, the overactive thyroid patients uh, normally will require further investigations, including blood tests and scans. And then with the scan and the blood test, we can confirm what type of overactive thyroid problem they have. Then, you know, we can actually uh, treat them appropriately. But the standard uh, of treatment would be giving uh, medications, like I said, carbimazole. And also in the beginning, because they have overactive thyroid problem, they can have uh, effects on their heart, especially their heartbeat will be faster. We will have to give them some beta blockers to control their heart rate. But often with uh, time, you know, we will be able to stop the beta blockers and then treat them with the carbimazole tablet. So in summary, uh, I would like to highlight that the thyroid problem need to be recognized at the earliest opportunity. So any patient uh, with diabetes or pre-diabetes should have their thyroid checked at the earliest opportunity. It's a very cheap test. NHS will offer that without any problem. And then the difficulty may be once uh, the thyroid is recognized, it actually adds on another layer to the uh, barrier of managing the diabetes you know, uh, treatment. And that needs to be recognized. And at times, I think you know, we will have to get the specialist involved and uh, you know, get the right treatment for the patient. So I think it's a very brief one, but I thought uh, I want to keep it very brief and maybe we will have some time to discuss any questions you know, people may well have. Over to you, Keith.